It's that time of the year when the new tech starts to roll out, including the latest new action cameras. And I just so happen to have the two latest models from the two biggest brands, DJI with the Osmo Action 5 Pro and GoPro with the Hero 13. Now to be transparent and to abide to UK advertising laws, I have to say that this is a sponsored video. DJI have supplied me with this camera, but they've also supplied me with the GoPro to compare it against. So they must be pretty confident. Now, because this is a sponsored video, it's not gonna be a review. This is more of a first look. I'm gonna show you some of their key features, and then we're gonna get out on a bike and compare the footage. Then you can decide which one you prefer. Now, earlier this year, I did do quite an in-depth video on the previous models from both brands where I did give my opinion. So if you do want to know what I think of the form factor, the usability of the shape of the cameras and so on, then I'll link that down below. Go check that out. Speaking of features, both of these cameras have some unique ones. So let's take a closer look and see what they have on offer. The Action 5 Pro boasts a large one over 1.3 sensor, which should give it an image quality advantage, especially in low light situations. It has 13 stops of dynamic range, 4K 60 frames a second with high dynamic low light imaging, 4K 120 frames a second and 150 degree ultra wide angle. Rock steady stability is still here, which includes 45 and 360 degree horizon leveling. It has 10 bit color and also does D log M and HDL color grade options. Behind the O is a color temperature sensor. This detects the current white balance and helps improve the color accuracy of your content. This is helpful when diving and you want underwater color optimization, and it's also optimized for colorful events such as sunrises and sunsets. Photo wise, the Osmo Action 5 will now do 40 megapixel still imaging, which is up from 10 megapixel on the Action 4. Plus another new feature, it now has 47 gigabytes of internal memory for those times you forget an SD card. Now the Action 4 is claims to be cold resistant and that's no different for the Action 5 Pro. However, one changes, this now has improved battery life and claims up to four hours. Now that test was done under lab conditions at 25 degrees whilst recording 1080p, 24 frames a second video with Rocksteady on, Wi-Fi off and screens off. So real life performance may vary a little bit. Now, one thing DJI seem really proud about is the use of the industry's first high performance 4NM chip. Now I had to Google what that actually was, but basically it means smaller transistors so you can fit more of them in, resulting in better performance. And that better performance can be done deeper as the Action 5 is waterproof without a case down to 20 meters, two meters further than the 4. One upgrade from the Action 4 is in the screens. Now the Action 4 had dual LED screens, whereas the Action 5 Pro has dual OLED. Now they're still both touch screens and they are brighter than LEDs. So if you're riding on a sunny day, you should be able to see the screens a lot easier. Now this next feature isn't so much of an interest for me being a cyclist, but if you're a diver, you might be interested to know this is the industry's first action camera with a built-in pressure gauge. This next feature isn't new for DJI, but it's good enough to mention anyway. The Action 5 has a built-in receiver meaning it works with DJI's audio ecosystem. Once initially connected, the Mic 2 will automatically connect when they're both switched on in the future, making professional audio quick and easy to get. Going back to the displays, there is an option for always on display. This basically means that it only displays recording time and specifications during night rides to prevent light interference. It also has sports data tracking interconnectivity which basically means you can import your data from Apple Watches, Garmin devices, or any third-party .fit files. Like the Action 4, the Action 5 Pro still uses magnetic quick-release mounts, and it also has native vertical shooting. And like the Action 4, the Action 5 Pro still supports a GPS Bluetooth remote controller, which can also record stats like speed, compass bearings, things like that. Another new feature, the Action 5 Pro, is subject tracking mode. Now DJ have this in their drone, so it makes sense they'll pass it down to the action cameras, and this will help keep your subject in the center of frame. Those are the key features, don't get me wrong, there's a lot more going on in this camera, but I'll be here all day if I had to explain every last one of them. So let's move on to the GoPro Hero 13. 
So is 13 a lucky number for GoPro? Let's go through some of its new features, which some of them I can't actually show you because they are optional extras, which I don't have. And that leads us to lenses. The Hero 13 has multiple lens options. And not only that, they have automatic recognition. So there's a wide angle, there's a macro lens, there's an anamorphic lens, plus a set of four ND filters. Now, like I said, these are optional extras, which you will have to pay for. So the wider angle lens, which is the same as the Lens Mod 2.0, is £100 extra. The macro lens is £130, same as the anamorphic, and the ND filters are £70. But the really cool feature is, especially with the ND filters, the camera will automatically recognize what's been fitted and adjust the settings to match. Now, I tend not to use ND filters because I'm not so much of a camera guy. You have to have the right filter, then get the camera in the right settings, and to be honest with you, I often get it wrong. However, if the Hero 13 will automatically recognize them and adjust the settings to match, that could be a real time saver for someone like me. Now, like I said, I don't have any of these lenses, so I can't compare them in my tests later. I'm just gonna be using the standard lens that it comes with. The next upgrade is the battery life with GoPro claiming up to two and a half hours of continuous recording. Now that was measured in a lab at 25 degrees with wind speeds of 0.6 meters a second, wide digital lens, wireless connections, Bluetooth and HyperSmooth on, front and rear LED screens on with a one minute screensaver, voice control and GPS off. No mention of what FPS or image quality they used in the test though. Now a feature that's brand new for the Hero 13, which again, I don't have here because it's an optional extra, is a magnetic weatherproof charging point. The side door will be replaced with a compatible one and then a cable will magnetically click to it. It'll be weatherproof and you can charge the GoPro as you're using it. But like I said, that is an optional extra and that will cost you 80 pounds. Now, another new feature for GoPro is magnetic mounting, but that is an optional extra at 25 pounds. One feature the Hero 13 shares with the Hero 12 is being able to film up to 5.3K video. But a new feature it has is super slow-mo with up to 400 frames a second. Now there are limitations there. 400 frames a second is only in 720p for 15 seconds. It can drop down to 360 frames a second, but that's at 900p for 15 seconds, so slightly better quality, but slightly faster footage. Or 120 frames a second at full 5.3 quality, but only for five seconds. It's waterproof down to 33 foot, which is just over 10 meters. It also has a 155 degree wider angle in full 8.7 ratio and 5.3K. It has 10 bit color with a flat option for color correcting and Bluetooth audio support with Apple AirPods. So if we're comparing the Hero 13 to the Action 5 Pro, the Action 5 Pro has a bigger sensor with a one over 1.3 compared with a one over 1.9. The GoPro films up to two and a half hours, whereas the DJI claims four hours. The GoPro will go down to 10 meters versus the DJI which will go down to 20 meters. And the GoPro has dual LED screens versus the DJI which has dual OLED. Price wise, the GoPro in its basic kit goes to 399 pounds. Now, if I wanted to splash out and get all the accessories like all the lenses, all the magnetic mounts, the charging cable, it would cost a whopping 905 pounds. The Action 5 Pro comes in at 329 pounds for the standard combo and £409 for the Adventure Combo. So in summary, DJI has the larger sensor, longer battery life, can go deeper, has OLED screens rather than LED, more color grading options, has subject tracking plus night filming modes, 360 degree stability, which GoPro needs a lens mod for that option, pressure sensors, a color temperature sensor, magnetic mounts as standard, and built-in storage. The GoPro has more lens options, with less setup needed with the automatic recognition, more filming options with the eight to seven ratio and 5.3K res, weatherproof magnetic charging, built in one quarter tripod mount. It can film higher frame rates in bursts, can film vertical without rotating the camera. And from what I can tell, can gather GPS data without the need for any other accessories. There's definitely unique features with both cameras, but how do they look out in the real world? Let's go find out. Just like my previous camera test videos, I've come to my favorite testing grounds, Cathkin Braes, just south of Glasgow. Behind me here is a trail that is about 30 to 40 seconds long. I've not actually timed it, but in the past, I've proved to be fairly consistent on it, and it's a perfect short track to test cameras. 
Last time I was doing this on my e-bike, but actually, as you can see behind me, I've got my Bird Ether 7, and actually this is one of my first rides on this bike. So disclaimer, I'm not gonna be that fast. I may fall off a couple of times, but this video isn't about me showing off my speed or lack thereof. This is purely about the cameras. And speaking of cameras, this is the setup I'm gonna use. Now, obviously the lenses are slightly apart, so there's gonna be a slight difference in the angles, but I have tried to get these as close as possible to make the clips as close a comparison as possible, and that was quite the tongue twister. Now, last time I filmed, I actually used a chest mount as well. However, I'm just gonna stick with the chin mount for now. This is actually my preferred filming method. If you do wanna see videos compare the chin mount to the chest mount, then please check out my previous video but I am limited for time to make this one, so we're just gonna stick with the chin mount. Right, well, I think that's everything set. Just need to make sure the angles are correct, send it down this hill and try not to crash. Okay, here we go. I've just done a little angle test. Fingers crossed we are pointing the right direction. You can actually see the trail. I have both cameras set up in what I would probably consider the most common setup that riders would use. So people seem keen on 60 frames a second, 4K, we have standard color, no flat colors or anything. I've got medium stability on, on both cameras. I've dropped the sharpness down a little bit. I've denoised the DJI just a tad. Now I don't have HDR on with the GoPro. The DJI is basically the standard color profile is HDR and I can't really turn that off. So I'll switch the HDR on on the GoPro in a little bit, but until then, this is just absolutely standard. If I make this down in one piece, I'll be amazed, but yeah, here it goes. Well, made it down safely, first go. Happy with that. Let's head back up and try another setting. I have changed the settings on the cameras slightly. I've dropped the frame rates down to 24 frames a second. That should let more light in and also give a bit of motion blur, which could enhance the look of the speed that I'm going, which believe me, I need all the help I can get. I've also swapped the GoPro onto HDR mode so perhaps that will more closely match the look of the DJI. But enough chat, let's head down the hill again. We've got squirrels over here. <laughs> I had to slow down for him then. Two wheel drift. Testing the grip of the tires there. Sweep down safely. Not so sure about that squirrel though.
I have moved on from the trails in the woods and I'm now on my hex at the pump track with Fraser. I wanted someone to follow because the DJI has its new tracking mode. Now this will crop in a little bit so it's not going to be super wide or anything but I'm hoping if Fraser goes slow enough it will keep him in shot. Now the Hero 13 doesn't have that feature so that's just going to be wide and hopefully that'll just keep you in shot anyway but let's see how they compare to each other. Chilled Fraser. Yeah I'm just getting back into it. Chilled. next run I have upped the resolution on the GoPro to its max 5.3k. Now I can't do that on the DJI so I'm going to leave the settings the same but the one thing I can potentially improve is the audio. So at the minute I have it hooked up to the mic 2 which is stuck to the side of my helmet with a bit of black tack. But yeah just need to get my gloves on, send it down the trail, try not to run over any squirrels. Let's do this. It's a very muddy corner that one. Yo! Okay, next test. We are going to try both cameras square format. The DJI has a 4 to 3 ratio and the GoPro has an 8 to 7. Now square format is pretty exciting for us content creators who want to get landscape footage and vertical clips from the same footage. By filming a big square you can then basically choose where you want your frame to be. I'm going to head down the trail once more and the next two clips are going to be the same run but just one landscape and one vertical and we'll see how they both look. Right, here goes. <laughs> Getting muddy in that corner. <sighs> Bike does have a lot of pop. Getting muddy in that corner. The bike does have a lot of pop. So I got vertical footage from the big square format last time but both of these cameras have native vertical shooting too. The DJI has to be flipped to vertical mode whereas the GoPro can stay horizontal but you go through the menu and you have to choose vertical. Now the GoPro seems to be cropped in a little bit, it's not as wide whereas the DJI basically stays exactly the same as horizontal mode. There's been another couple of changes, one I'm forced to do, the GoPro in this format only shoots 30 or 60 frames a second so I've adjusted the DJI to 30 to match. The other thing I wanted to experiment with was a colour profile on the GoPro which I've now changed from standard to vibrant and that of course means I'm no longer on HDR which has been for the last few clips. After this run I will try the flat colour profiles and do a bit of colour correcting and see what difference that can make. But for now, let's head down the trail and see how dedicated vertical footage looks. Uh. 
that is getting slippery. There we go, sweet. Well, this is looking different, isn't it? Like I said, I'm gonna play with a bit of color correcting. We have GoPro in its flat color profile and DJI in its D-Log profile. Now, I'll never claim to be the best at color correcting, but I'll try and make this footage look as good as I can, and then you can decide which one you prefer. Two wheel drift around that. Again, a lot of drift on these tires, it's kind of nice to control. I'm amazed I haven't fallen off after saying that. Sweet. Two wheel drift around that. Again, a lot of drift on these tires, it's kind of nice to control. I'm amazed I haven't fallen off after saying that. Sweet. We are going again. We're keeping the GoPro in the same flat color profile but we have changed the DJI to the HGL color profile. Now it doesn't actually look too different from the standard profile, but I'm gonna play with it and see what I can do with this, see if I can make this look really nice. I'm gonna do another test when it's dark, but that's in a couple of hours. So I'm just gonna head back down and chill, but I had to come back up to get my bag. So I may as well film the ride back down. Got both cameras back in pretty much standard settings. 60 frames a second, standard color profiles, 4K, standard hyper smooth, all that kind of stuff. So the light has changed a little bit. Let's see how they look later on in the day. He just ran over a squirrel. I can hear it running away though, so he's okay. Oh no, poor guy. Oh, I hope he's okay. He hit my foot, so it wasn't like it was under the wheels, I don't think. Kamikaze squirrel. So I went home, had a little snack, waited for it to get a little bit darker, and now I'm back. And it's actually quite an epic sunset over the distance there. You might get glimpses of it as I go down the trail. But I want to know what these cameras are like when the light levels start to drop. Now currently it is literally just sunset so it's not super dark but with the leaves on the trees it is getting pretty dark in the woods. I'd say this is the equivalent of being in some of the really dense woods that you get in some of the Scottish trails. So the scenario is you've been out riding You've taken longer than you thought, the sun has started to set, it is getting darker and you just want to carry on down to the car. How do the cameras cope once the levels start to dip? And yes, I have forgotten my gloves this time.
Anyway, less chat because I need to get down before it does get too dark. But once I'm down, I'm back up again and I'm going to try a few more different settings as the light gets even darker and darker. Right, I'm actually struggling to see a little bit, so this is going to get pretty spicy. Oh, just trying to remember oh, where the trail goes. Now, last time I rode in the dark, I almost hit a deer and I did hit a squirrel last time I was coming down, so... Whoa, ho, ho, ho. A tight between the trees there. Whoa. Getting a bit loosey-goosey on the last bit, but we made it down and look at the colours. That is nice. Right, let's go again. I've heard that flattening the colour profile or can give you more information. So I'm kind of hoping that it will help with the low light a little bit. So I've got the GoPro on its flat setting. I've got the DJI on its D-Log setting. I'm going to go down, color correct it, and see if that actually makes low light even better. So, oh man, let's go, let's do this again. Whoop. Yeah, this is, oh. This is a real struggle now. Going quiet because I need to concentrate. Wow, it's really dark in here now. There we go, down safely somehow. Right, if you want confirmation of how dark it is, I've got people out for night rides. Have a good one, guys. Right, go. <laughs> now, I don't have the benefits of lights, but the DJI does have a night mode, so I think I should try that. Now, that isn't available in the widest setting, so we're just going to standard wide mode. So I'm gonna adjust the GoPro to match. So be right back. Right, at the minute, I don't have the helmet on. I'm actually just looking at the screens themselves and I'd say the GoPro isn't far off from what reality is. The DJI, yeah, that's a lot brighter than it currently is, but will it cope with a bit of motion? Let's find out. I'm gonna stick the helmet on and send it down once more. I think I actually will have to go a bit slower now because that is literally just diving into the void right there. Oh man. <laughs> Yeah, this is really dark. My eyes don't like this one bit. I think oh, I can kind of make out there's a dark line where the path should be, but I can't see any detail. It, oh, I thought there's a tree right in front of me then. Yeah, I can't see any detail like lumps, rocks, roots, trees, like the small ones. Oh, oh my. Right, get a bit brighter down here. Oh, we're not bright enough. Right, well, I'm actually pretty pleased I made it down there safely. Okay, here's a quick one. I have just kind of played with the manual settings in these cameras, and I'm not going to ride the bike because it's getting pretty sketchy and I can't be asked going back up the hill. But I just wanted to compare kind of standing in the woods here. Uh, we've got the sunset behind me there. How do they look? Can you still see? Uh, I'm not saying this setting would work for either camera once stuff gets shaky, but I don't know. Um, maybe as a last ditch resort, if you're not riding and you just want to film something in the dark, like try and walk backwards up a steep slope, would it work in a pinch? Yeah, let me know your thoughts. So there we go, everyone. That is the DJI Action 5 Pro versus the GoPro Hero 13. Now, I didn't show every feature they had because this video would be about two hours long, but I did choose the features I think would be most commonly used. So I hope you found that useful if you're deciding which camera you want to buy. It goes without question that I want to say a big thanks to DJI for supplying both cameras. Let me know down in the comments if you had a camera you preferred, if there was a camera that worked better in different scenarios, I'd love to know what you think. 
But thanks so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you again next time. So take care everyone, bye bye.